jacket okay now for our jacket we are going to be designing the same bodies that we've been using for our shirt and other designs the only difference is that this time around we're going to be constructing a shoulder that the first step is to create a margin for our front lapel the kind of jacket we are creating is a lapel jacket the one that has a separate collar so depending on the wideness of your lapel you measure a margin i am going to be measuring 2.5 inches for my lapel allowance from the edge of your paper you measure it downwards and you construct a long line using your long ruler From this line, I'm going to be uh, creating all the other measurements. So, uh, our measurement for this jacket is being shown on the screen. Our back measurement is 14 inches. So, I'm going to be dividing the 14 by 2 to form 7. So, I'll be adding sewing allowances to this pattern as I measure. So I'm adding half inch to that seven to form seven point five in my sewing allowance, and then you mark. For our neckline measurements, there's a calculation for it. Calculation is showing on the screen. It's bust circumference divided by eight plus one over two. Our bust in this case is thirty three. So after calculating, our neckline uh, measurements should be two point five by. 2.5 and then with the use of our French cord and draw the neckline cord This point here is known as our neck point. We want to create our shoulder slant now. So from the back, we're going to measure 0 0.9 inches and mark, and then draw a slant line to the neck point. This point here is known as our shoulder point. I'm going to be doing some construction with pencil so I'll enable me to erase because I'm going to be raising some portions up. Now I want to draw our arm sky height. Our arm sky height, like I told you before, is our back divided by two. So in this case, it's seven inches. So you draw a straight line and a perpendicular line, and then you draw up your arm sky curve using your French curve. Now, the next stage is to draw our bust pan line. Our bust pan is 7. So when you divide 7 by 2, you get 3.5. So, I am going to be adding half inch to that. That is half inch for my sewing allowance. So I will be measuring 4 inches for my bust pan. And you draw a line that cuts across. Next, I'm going to be drawing my bust height, my waist height, and my hip height. The bust height is 9.5. So I'm going to be adding half inch sewing allowance. The half inch sewing allowance at the shoulder. So that's 10. Our waist height is 15.5. So I'm going to be measuring 16. 
Then our if height, in this case, we are using the length of the jacket, which is 25. So plus one inch allowance, we are measuring 26. So with those points, you draw out your horizontal lines and you label all the lines accordingly. So the first line is known as your bust line. Then you draw your another horizontal line on the waist and you label it waist line. And then the final line is the hip line, which is also the length of the jacket. So on the bust line, we want to construct our shoulder that now. Now take note. On the bust line, this point here is known as the bust point. Bust point. From that point, measure one inch upwards and mark. And then go up on the, at the top of the bust fan line. Measure one inch to the left and mark. Now join the two points. That's the first line of our shoulder that. This line is the first line of our shoulder that we want to create the second line now. The second line is three inches away from the first line. For medium sized people, we use three inches. For very big people, we use 3.5. And for small, very small, we use 2.5. So I'm going to be using three inches in this case. We're three inches away from this first line and mark. So we're going to be joining this new point to this point but take note the length of this line must be the equal to the length of this line so measure the length of this line first that's exactly nine inches and then draw a nine inch long line to the new point now this is uh, this is the gap of our shoulder that so we are going to be reconstructing the shoulder, which means the initial shoulder line and the arm sky that we drew, we are going to have to erase it and construct a new one. So this is how we do it. The shoulder length initially, when you measure it, discover that it was 5 inches. Now, the new shoulder length is going to be 5 inches plus the 3 inches gap so now we have eight inches so from this neck point measure eight inches and mark if i draw my line according to the initial line i'm going to be doing something wrong the new line should be an inch lower than the initial line because because of the shape of the dart, I'm going to form a different slant. So, assuming I draw dotted lines to indicate the old line, I can measure one inch lower than it and then draw the new line starting from this point. But just ensure that the, the old thing is eight inches long. When you include the three inch dart, plus the five inch of the shoulder. So this is our new line. And then from this point, we will now measure a new arm sky, which is going to be slanting. It's not going to be standing upright anymore. It's going to slant because the shoulder is shifting towards this angle. So you draw a line that is almost parallel to this dart line. And the line, like we said before, is 7 inches long. Our arm sky line is 7 inches long. And from that point, draw a perpendicular line. You can use a 90 degrees ruler to draw a perpendicular line. And then you draw your new arm sky.
for clarity's sake you can decide to erase the initial arm sky so that the whole thing can be clearer yeah, so. after erasing the initial line you can see that our drawing now looks different it's as if we cut the pattern at this point and we spread it so now we will now measure our bust circumference on the bust line our bust is 33 the 3 divided by 4 is 8.25 mark and then I'll add my sewing allowance okay before I had my sewing allowance let me measure all the circumferences the waist is 30 divided by 4 is 7.5 but you have to add an extra 1 inch on the waistline because we are picking a dart on the waistline and the dart is one inch wide and the hip circumference will be picked at the length of the gown the hip is 37 divided by 4 is 9.25 so i'm going to add sewing allowance of about an inch all all the way up and then you join the dot so next we pick our dot on the waistline on the bust pan line Measure half inch to the left of the bust pan line and half inch to the right of it. Make sure your dart does not climb the bust point. So what you do is this. You measure 1.5 inches below the bust point and you mark. And that will be the height, upper height of the dart. The lower height, the length of the dart is determined by the length of the jacket. So since our jacket is long, it can be as long as 5.5 inches. But it shouldn't be shorter than that unless the jacket is quite short. So the final stage is to increase the uh, arms and neck curve down into the lapel area. And our jacket pattern is ready. Well, I want my the, my neckline to slant down into my lapel, so I'm going to change the design of that place. Your neckline will be based on the design of your jacket, so I want it to slant down. So this is our jacket pattern. Okay, so this is our jacket pattern. Now there's one more thing. This gap here is known as our jacket break. And we need to shape the jacket break because it's not a shape that will come out at the end of the day. So there's a point known as a break point. The break point is the point 
where the jacket break ends. So for this particular design, we want it to end at the waistline. That's the point where the jacket overlaps with the, with the right and the left piece overlaps. So we want it to end at the waistline. This is our waistline. So this is how we shape it. So from the um, uppermost part, you just shape it downwards. Now, when you get to the waistline area, you don't go to the line directly. You leave about an inch allowance for the overlap. So you go down like this. And then you stop there. And then from that point on, you go straight down. So this point here is known as our break point. So at the end of the day, you have something like this. to construct the collar now so you get a small piece of paper as a side piece as a center piece get a small piece of paper and place it just under the neckline of our center piece and you get a long ruler and then you start from this break point you place the ruler there then you connect the break point to the neck point okay so we're going to have an imaginary line there and the line will extend into the paper. Now, how do we know the length of this line? So the length of this line is half of the back neckline. And this is what I mean by the back neckline. This is the neckline for the back. So we measure this line. Whatever you get is going to be the length of that line. So in this case, it's 2.7 inches. So you measure 2.7 inches. And then you mark. Now the next step is this. Measure 1 centimeter from this line to towards the left and mark and then draw a new line also 2.7 inches long so we are discarding this first line we are going to make use of this second line and then from this line measure 90 degrees using your 90 degrees ruler and draw the length of this new line is depending on the height of your collar it's style dependent so trace out the neckline measure two inches from the edge of your jacket break and then mark that's where our collar will end so from that point draw out the slanting line Now, I want to join this line to this line. We need to get a 90 degrees angle from this point too. So, take your 90 degrees ruler again and get 90 degrees line. Okay, we can remove this. We don't need this anymore since we've already traced out the neckline. So the line here does not have to be straight. Now you have to design your collar based on what you want. So I am going to make it curve inwards a little bit. So some people might design their collar so that it will curve outward. Some might make it straight. I designed mine so that it curves slightly inwards. And that's my collar pattern. So I'm going to be cutting out this pattern. And this place will be cut on fold. This line is cut on fold.
So this, a cola pepper. Now we want to draft the back pattern for our jacket. We will not be able to use the front pattern piece to cut the back because the back does not have a shoulder dart. So the because of the difference in the dart, we have to be cutting a separate back pattern. So and then the first step for our own type of jacket at TMU again, we always ensure that the back has a joining at the mid uh, center back. And the reason for this is to be able to shape the back. So we're going to be put, get, leaving one inch allowance at the back before we start our measurement. Here is the center back. So the one inch allowance will be at the center back. So all our measurements start from this new line. So just like we did for the front, we measure the back divided by 2. The back is 14, divided by 2 is 7, plus half inch two in our line. The neckline was 2.5 inches wide, but the depth is going to be just half inch. On a slide four. Now, for the shoulder slant, measure 0.9 inches downwards and draw your slant. So there is our shoulder point. From the shoulder point, let's draw our arm style. The height of our arm style is half of the back, which is seven inches. So you draw a perpendicular line, and then with the use of your friend curve, or if you use your free hand, you draw the curve of your arm style. Next is our bust height. Our bust height is 9 inches. Our waist height is 15.5 inches. And the height of the jacket is 25 inches. So I added allowances. So you draw out horizontal lines to indicate your bust line, waist line. And the height of the jacket respectively next we also need to okay next now we'll measure out the circumferences our bust is 33 so divided by 4 is 8.25 we add one inch sewing allowance our waist is 30 divided by 4 is 7.5 we add one inch sewing allowance and one inch draft allowance and then the hip is 37 divided by 4 is 9.25 we add one inch sewing allowance and then you join the point so now we want to Pick the dart for the back. We do not need the bust fan at the back. You just get the midpoint of the waistline. And then you pick your dart from that midpoint. Our midpoint is here. So we draw a line at the midpoint. The dart at the back is always as high as possible. It's as high as possible. So sometimes it passes the bust line a little bit. So on the waistline, measure half inch to the left and half inch to the right. So the height of our dart, I'm not going to be measuring it, but as like I said, it's going to be as high as possible. The higher, the better. Now, at this point, we're going to be shaping the back piece. The shaping, the shaping depends on the hip size. For, for a medium sized person, you measure half inch. But for a bigger person, you could go as high as one inch. In 0 
0.75 inch so you blend it as high as possible and then the lower part to go straight into the hip area so these are back piece Already added allowance, so I don't need to add allowance anymore. Anyway. So here's a here's a chocolate. We have something like this and this and it overlaps.
already added allowance. So I don't need to add allowance anymore. We have something like this and this and it overlaps. Yeah.